So, okay, good evening to all the students. Uh, welcome to week eight discussion of our uh, NPTEL program on our course Electrical Machines 2. I am Sai Krishna Mulpuri. So, let's start our discussion uh, about the starting of three phase induction motors. So, last week uh, we have seen uh, the induction motor uh, power flow diagram and the losses involved in an induction machine. And also, we discussed uh, how we can improve the starting torque of a machine by introducing external uh, resistances. And we also see how it will affect the maximum torque and also the slip at which the maximum torque occurs. And we have derived some equations for the electromagnetic torque. From that, we, already, we also derived the equations for maximum torque of the machine. Now, uh, to extend the discussion further, this week we will uh, discuss the concept of starting of three-phase induction machine. So, what exactly is the starting? So, what conditions we are going to uh, address and at what uh, key points we are going to discuss today that we will see today. So, this is a, a very easy concept, but at the same time, we have to understand the necessity of this concept. Why do we need a starting uh, mechanism for a three-phase induction machine uh, or at all. So, what is the need for it and why it comes into the picture and what are the different ways to achieve this uh, starting of an induction machine and uh, which, uh, what is the application of uh, which method. So, there are many methods of starting of an uh, induction machine. So, which method comes into picture at what, uh, what uh, application and uh, based on the need, based on the uh, um, motor characteristics and cost involved, everything, everything keeping in uh, perspective, we will see uh, the application of different starting methods. So with that, uh, a bit of pre-introduction, let's start our discussion today based uh, about starting of three-phase induction machine. I'm just representing a short, a short form of induction machine as uh, I am. So, yeah. Uh, now, uh, we know that <coughs> every machine has its own equivalent circuit. The same way our induction machine is also having an uh, equivalent circuit, which we derived in the previous weeks. Now, I'll just represent the equivalent circuit that we are going to refer. So, I'm just... Simple equivalent circuit we are going to take. So, yeah. if this is the supply side and this is the rotor part as stator part and this is the rotor part R1, X1, this is X2 dash and R2 dash by S. So, there is uh, another parallel branch which is the core loss resistance and also the magnetizing reactors in parallel. Of course, we can neglect that. Uh, when if it is the magnitude is very high compared to the uh, stator and rotor impedances. So here this is the part where we will give our input voltage. We call uh, or since it's the per phase equivalent circuit, the voltage which we give here will be voltage per phase. So this one, uh, this is the supply voltage for each phase we are going to give. Now uh, we are <coughs> interested to know what happens at the starting of the machine now uh, since the concept is starting of three phase induction motor we are interested to know what happens at the time of starting uh, let's say my machine is stationary now and uh, we have not given any supply to my machine it's just lay uh, it's just there stationary now at this instant i have switched on the supply and how much current will flow at this starting position this, this is what uh, we are interested in now, uh, let's say my machine is not yet started running. So, because as soon as give you, uh, as soon as you give a supply to the machine, your machine won't start running instantaneously, because every body, even a human body or any object or any any anything, will have a property called inertia. You might have also heard about this. So, inertia is a property which makes the body. Uh, to, uh, to to react to any external force with some delay. 
so if you are if you are if someone pushed you with some external force you will have uh, inertia in your body so you will take some time uh, there is some instant where you you will stay in that position itself and you will then after a momentary time you will fall, you will fall so that that inertia is uh, present in any body so now the concept of inertia comes into picture while discussing the starting of a induction machine because even we are provided our provided our machine with a supply our machine won't start running instantaneously due to its inertia so at that instant when my machine is trying to overcome its inertia what happens during that period of time so how much current uh, my machine will draw so that's the point of interest for today's discussion so that's the exact uh, point of time which we are interested to know what amount of current will be drawn by my machine so since it's starting so in, since it's starting our uh, our whole discussion today will be carried out at the place where slip is equals to 1 because starting means s equals to 1 that we know now r2 by s here the s will be equals to 1 at the starting now yeah as we as the motor pick up pick, picks up the speed slip comes into the picture and slip uh, uh, the value of slip reduces from 1 so that's the minimum value is 0 maximum value is 1 at the starting my slip value is 1 now <clears throat> At s equals to one, at s equals to one, and t, uh, what we can say like t is equals to zero plus. You know, you call uh, you call it as a transient sometimes, or just just after the starting time. So t is equals to zero is initially. Now, just after you give it a supply, what happens? So this is the uh, instant time instance which we are interested in. Now we know that. when my slip is equals to 1 at a starting position now if you see the uh, equivalent circuit all the impedances combined rotor and stator will be very very less compared to my parallel branch so usually here uh, we have some parallel branch where this is a core loss component and here we have magnetizing reactance now the the order of magnitudes of these compared to these at the starting because since s is equals to 1 r2 is r2 is it is at at its minimum so once there is some 0.5 0.2 or something slip r2 is very high now since it's s equals to 1 all the r1 x1 r2 x, uh, x2 are at its mean uh, are at its very low order of magnitude so here we can easily neglect the parallel branch impedance so because when two parallel branches are in parallel so the equivalent impedance will be at the order of the lower impedance only so here our lower impedance is the entire uh, circuit so it's it's justifiable uh, of neglecting or uh, eliminating our parallel branch so yeah so that's why we have neglected our parallel branch because the entire impedance is lower when compared to the parallel branch so now let's take at this instant this is my stator of our induction machine start connector stator so th uh, this is my uh, sorry now uh, here i am i'm not directly connecting my machine so there i am using a switch this is a switch i am connecting via this switch i will connect my machine stator to the supply so here anyway i will have my rotor yeah now uh, at this <coughs> instant this is my stator and my rotor and here i am giving my supply voltage so here it is not phase it's a line to line so here i am applying line to line rated voltage to the supply terminals of my stator now the instant when you close the switch current drawn by your motor will be very very large since the impedance is very low and you have applied the full rated voltage the current the current drawn uh, by a machine will be very large now 
around uh, the magnitude of this current drawn by the machine under starting condition is around uh, 8 to 10 times of the full load current. Now, let's say your machine is uh, rated at 10 amperes. Mm. The starting current will be around 80 to 90 amperes. So, that's a huge current. You have to be considerable, uh, considerable amount of current. Now, it is not good to pass such high currents through uh, my motor winding. Now, the question is, why it is not good? So, what bad does it does to the machine if I am able to pass? So, another question is, why my motor is not able to handle that high current? Is, is it my motor uh, designed to handle that high current? My motor is designed for uh, 10 amps rated. Can't it carry 80 amps current? Can't it handle the current? That's the question. So, now it is very tricky, you can say. It's very tricky to understand whether my motor can handle this current or not because it depends on the size of the machine. It depends on the size of the machine and the uh, inertia of, the, uh, of my motor. Now, let's say uh, let's say you have a small motor, it has its uh, own inertia, it has its own size. Whether your motor can handle that current depends on three different parameters, that is size of your motor and the inertia of your motor and the time for which that huge current is flowing through the motor. Whether it is flowing for few seconds or is it flowing for minutes or is it flowing for a considerable amount of time. So these three uh, parameters will contribute to understand whether my motor can able to handle this huge current or not. Like I said, uh, let's take, uh, for example, I'm saying, let's say my motor is rated at uh, 10 amps and now I have given uh, supply to my uh, machine and we know that around 80 amps will flow through the windings. Now, uh, let's say it is rated and this is starting current. Now, so this 80 amps which we are seeing here will be flowing through. One second. Yeah. So, this 80 amps what we are seeing here will be flowing through, let's say, uh, two motors. Now, this 80 amps I have made to flow through small motor and a big motor now can anyone tell me for which machine this 80 amps will be suitable so both machines are having let's say 10 amps rated only now which machine will be able to take this 80 amps which which for which machine it's okay to pass this 80 amps is it smaller motor or bigger motor So, considering the size, inertia, and time for which the current flows, can anyone tell which which one which motor can able to take this 80 amps if it is rated for 10 amps? <clears throat> okay. So, then I tell you, <clears throat> it is better to give uh, that amount of current if your motor is small. I tell you the reason because when your motor is small. Uh, your size of the machine is small, your inertia of your motor is very less. I mean, uh, the time it will take to come, uh, overcome the inertia is very less. It's a very small motor. Now, you have applied the full rated voltage line to the to your small motor and uh, you, have, uh, you have produced some starting torque there. Now, once your machine has some starting torque, inertia is very low and your machine will pick up speed very rapidly. Now, in, in, in no time, your machine will pick up the speed. Now, as the speed increases, what happens? As your speed increases, this 80 amps of starting current will start to decrease. Because as your speed increases, your slip increases. So, your resistance impedance, total impedance increases and your current comes down. Everything, this all, all the steps which I have uh, uh, discussed now will happen very fast. You have given full uh, rated voltage. Now, 80 amps current will be drawn from the supply. And your more, uh, the more 80 amps will flow through the, your small motor. As soon as current flows through the motor, starting torque will be developed, and your motor will start to overcome the inertia very fast, and it will start picking up speed, and everything comes to normal state. 
it will pass the steady uh, this starting state to uh, low uh, running state now if you see the same case with the bigger motor uh, for example let's say your bigger motor is rated to 50 amps say 50 amps you take a bigger motor it's rated to 50 amps and now you see uh, for the starting uh, around uh, let's say 8 8 amps maybe 400 amps is the starting current now now at this instant if you see uh your bigger motor is having a larger inertia when compared to the smaller motor now when you switch on the supply you are giving the full rated voltage at the supply terminals your big motor will draw 400 amps when it is rated for 50 amps and it's not just 400 amps is flowing to the winding but since the inertia is very slow your slip is still at 1 your the value of slip is still at 1 and the period for which this 400 amps will flow through the windings of the motor is considerable amount of time now if you are if you are flowing such high current for enough time your winding will surely get damaged so what what i am trying to say is the time for which your starting current flows through the motor is very important so in this case 400 amps flowing through a bigger machine is very much dangerous compared to 80 amps flowing through a small machine because even though it is eight times its rated current your bigger motor has a larger inertia and uh, the time taken by the machine to overcome its inertia and to go to this uh, running condition will be considerably large and because of that large time period this 400 amps will be flowing through the winding in that period and it's very dangerous for the windings so that's why uh, you cannot give the full rated voltage to your machine during the starting condition so th th that's the point i want to say whenever you are starting a machine applying rated voltage to it at the starting condition is very wrong because once you apply the rated voltage it will try it will it will drop 8 to 10 times of that rated current and uh, if the if the inertia is very much and it will take much time to pick up its speed and the, that 8 to 10 times of the rated current will flow through the winding for enough time and that will damage your winding your winding might get uh, burned or you will see some smokes coming out of the machine such things will happen so this is one major issue which i want to uh, discuss with you and okay this is okay this is from the motor point of view now we have seen the issues from this side this is the motor point of view now we have to see what's the issue from the solar side as well right now okay now motor side issue is at small or big heat will be generated because heat generated is i square rt depends on the time for which the current is flowing so the the more the time is the more the heat is generated and it will damage your winding now let's see the issues from the source side okay i'm 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 i'm, I'm telling you since uh, 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 since we started this discussion your motor will draw eight times the rated current it, your motor will draw 80 amperes and your motor will draw 400 amperes and now from where that current should come only your source has source has to supply it now uh, without source there is no other uh, source from which your motor will draw that current now whatever current your motor will draw is it 8 times or 10 times your rated current that current has to come from source only right now the question is is source able to supply that current let's say even even for a very small period of time let's say your starting current starting phase is uh, lasting for some couple of seconds even for that one second you need a burst of current in that one second a 10 amps a 10 amps rated motor needs 80 amps of a bulk current for a burst of time <clears throat> now is your source able to uh, deliver that current uh, for a, that point of time so that's one question let's say okay my source is well equipped and my source can able to give that burst of current okay my there is no problem for my source side to give that 
large amount of current my source can supply but there is another issue even if it supplies say uh, okay this is my okay. this is my supply and the, and, and this switch is for connecting the my machine the, the, here 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 i'm connecting my machine okay now okay this this connection switch s will be closed whenever i want to connect my machine to the supply now this is my supply but let's take an industry or a household or any bus so this is the bus i am talking about now for this bus my motor might not be the only load that is connected to the bus when you will take an industry or a, uh, some distribution system machine is one of the load and to the same bus i have many loads connected Loads. These loads might be, uh, for example, uh, just take your uh, home. Uh, with, within your home, you are given a single phase supply or three phase supply, any supply based on your uh, load requirement. Let's say you are given a three phase supply from the uh, distribution pole. Now you have taken the supply, and the entire supply should supply to all the appliances, uh, electronic appliances within your house. So the same supply is connected to your fridge, your TV, your air conditioner, your cooler or your grinder everything now all the machines are connected to this uh, all the loads are connected to this this uh, bus only now one of the load to that is your your machine induction machine let's say it's a uh, it, it's in your refrigerator there is a single phase machine in that or motor in that you have uh, connected that and now you are switching on the refrigerator you are switching on the refrigerator means you are closing the switch the point is, your source will have some internal uh, impedance, right? So your source, let's say th this, I have taken the source. Let's try it in the separate book, separate uh, slide. Now, I'm, I'm modeling your source as source in series with some impedance. So this is how I'm modeling my source. Now, if you take that, this is my source. And this is where my connecting my fridge refrigerator. This is another phase. Okay. Here are all my loads connected. Whatever load you say, uh, name it all the uh tv uh something any 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 all the loads connected here uh, maybe heater or something tube lights uh, uh, fan all loads in your home are connected to this bus and here you have connected uh your let's say your air conditioner that um okay <clears throat> now you are switching on your supply this is Supply to the air conditioner or refrigerator, anything you can say. Now, as soon as you turn on your switch, we know that uh, if it is rated for 10 amps, let's say it is rated for 10 amps. Now, when you close the switch, it will draw 80 amps. So, instead of flowing 10 amps here, you are asking your supply to deliver 80 amps now. Now, just for that minute period of time, even though your source is able to supply that 80, the drop across this source impedance will be higher in case of 80 amps. Voltage drop is I into impedance, Iz. Now, here the Iz in this phases, when it is flowing 80 amps and when it is flowing 10 amps, in this case 80 amps, the drop will be higher. Now, let's say there is some V and after this drop, v minus iz will appear here right at this point 
V minus I Z will appear. That's a uh, subtracting the drop. After that, it will appear. Now, initially, uh, when when your motor is have to deliver ten amps, V minus I Z is some number, and during the starting phase, the drop will be much higher. Even just for a small period of time, your drop will be much higher. Now, the voltage available at the supply, which is supplying to all the loads as well as your air conditioner. We'll see a dip in voltage just for a uh, period of time. Now, now let's say you are. This is fine, and this is the voltage for all the loads. Now it is it is flowing like this. At this T one instant, you have switched on your AC. At that instant, eighty amps will flow in this, and the drop, uh, the load voltage will be. Much lower. You you have seen a much dip. Now at this small, you will see a dip in the voltage. And again, once it pick ups, the eighty amps will again come back to ten amperes, and again the same voltage will be supplied to all the loads. That's why this is a very common phenomenon you uh, observe in your households. Whenever you turn on uh, AC or refrigerator, your entire uh, tube lights and fans will you you see as a, a bit of fluctuation in the tube lights and the fans. So that's the reason for it. Whenever uh, at the starting of a big loads like this, because of the starting current, there exists a dip in the supply voltage. Now, okay, if it is for a small period of time, it's okay. But what if what if the dip stays for a longer period of time? It will start here. Now it will take enough time, then come back to it. So you will see a dip for considerable amount of time. Now it 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 it's not that. Uh, Nobody wants this. It, 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 nobody wants this kind of dip in our household items. Okay, even if it makes some discomfort, okay, uh, we can adjust uh, it with it. But some in industries or some uh, hospitals, this kind of dip is not at all acceptable. So this is uh, it might lead to uh, medical emergencies because whenever you are doing some operation or uh, this, there are some kind of critical equipment. Oxygen cylinders or some ECGs, everything will be working. And when it, it, it we can't encourage these kind of dips in such critical uh, equipments uh, when we are dealing with uh, medical <clears throat> hospitals. So this is this this phenomenon is not at all encouraged, and it, it, it brings very discomfort for households, and also it is unacceptable uh, in, in many instances. So what do we need to do to handle this kind of uh, Dip in the voltage. Uh, so yeah, so th this is the main problem that we are trying to address. So we should go back to the last slide. We have addressed the problem in the motor side. Okay, whether it's small or big motor, based on the inertia, we can say no. If it is a big motor, if it's have a bigger inertia, we can't we can't allow such high currents to flow through the motor because the motor winding will burn. That's the issue from the motor side. So what's the issue from the source side? Even though my source is able to capable uh, capable to deliver that uh, huge starting current, what about the voltage dip that across uh, across all loads? <clears throat> so this is the uh, issue from both motor side and also from the load side, which we will come across. Now, therefore. To address these issues, we are going for the starting methods. So there are uh, some starting methods which we will discuss now. So using that starting methods, we will try to limit the starting current so that we will try to limit the voltage dip at the source side and also the burden on the motor side. So we 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 have to uh, take some. Precautions, you can say, or we 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 will do some some kind of uh, arrangement such that my motor won't see that huge current at the starting side. So that uh, that is the uh, basic understanding to the starting methods of a induction motor. So why do we need a starting uh, method for induction motor? What happens if there is no starting method for induction motor? Is it harmful or is it what happens that we have seen? So, considering all these uh, disadvantages, you can say, or considering all these 
problems which we face at the starting. We have uh, introduced some starting methods for the induction machines. So one one easy and uh, obvious thing to do to reduce the starting current is anyone can say, as we discussed uh, the scenario, how can you reduce the starting current? So any 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 just idea you have? It's it's simple only. You can you can think and you can tell me some uh, simple idea that can limit the starting current at the starting. So what what we can do? <clears throat> Any idea? Okay. So as I said, we are applying the rated full line to line voltage to my motor at the starting. So that's the reason it's drawing 8 to 10 times of my rated current. Now, if I can able to find a way to reduce my initial supply voltage to my stator terminals so that the starting current drawn by the motor will also be less that's obvious uh, choice to reduce the starting current you don't give the full rated supply then you will uh, correspondingly you will limit the starting current right so that's one thing you can reduce the voltage that's anyhow we will see but before that <clears throat> as we discussed even if we want to give the full rated voltage, like the, the thing we discussed in the starting, uh, the, the thing which you have to keep in mind is your motor should be small enough such that it will pick up the speed very rapidly. So that's uh, in that way we can directly give your rated voltage to your uh, uh, machine. There is no starting method here. That kind of starting we call it as direct starting. Or you can, the name for it is direct online starting. So there is no any other mechanism you are using. There is no additional equipment we introduce to limit the voltage. But we will give directly the supply. So that is the first method. Which is uh, popularly known as DOL starting. DOL means direct online starting now as i said in this dol starting we are not limiting the voltage we are directly connecting the supply voltage to the terminals of the stator now obviously the different uh, the other types of starting methods will be reduced voltage starting my reduced voltage starting method will definitely limit the starting current because uh, I am reducing the supply voltage, corresponding starting current will also reduce. But, uh, but yeah, the thing we have to uh, keep in mind is for this direct only starting is for only small motors. And in this full voltage is applied. Now, Reduced voltage, definitely it's, uh, we can't apply the full voltage here. We have to find some way to reduce this uh, supply voltage. <clears throat> that we call reactor starting method. And another we have called auto transformer starting. And the last one is called star delta starting. Now, yeah, first we will discuss these three and uh, then we will see what is the star delta starting. One second. <clears throat> yeah, so all these methods uh, which you are seeing here are uh, for cage rotor. Cage rotor means you can't access the rotor terminals. Why I am saying this because in the last week, just last week discussion on the last uh, Tuesday, which when we discussed the starting torque or uh, torque speed characteristics of an induction machine, I will just quickly draw here. 
Now, let's say this is stock and this is slip. It is having some kind of characteristic like this. I hope you remember. Now, this is my maximum torque, right? This is the slip at which my maximum torque occurs. We discussed that if you can able to increase the rotor resistance, you can improve the starting torque. Now, so let's say this is for R2 dash. This is for R2 dash plus R external. So if you keep on increasing their uh, external resistance, you will keep on increasing the starting torque. So th this is the starting torque for case 1 and this is starting torque for case 2 and this is starting torque for case 3. Starting torque keeps on increases. But <clears throat> when you increase the resistance, that means your impedance is increasing and uh, yeah, from if you go back to your equivalent circuit, you are increasing this R2 dash by S, R2 dash plus R external by S. This is the new resistance now. So the impedance is increasing, you are limiting the starting current. Uh, that way you can do it. But if your rotor terminals are not available for you, let's say this is a cage rotor, this is a cage rotor now. Cage rotor means your rotor side is not available to you. You can't you can't change anything from the rotor side. So then we will go for this uh, starting methods. If it is a slip ring or a, a wound rotor, like uh, uh, when, when you have a slip rings, you can directly introduce some external resistances and you can uh, limit the starting current. That's also a, a way. Okay, anyhow. Now, yeah. What we will do is, we will take DOL method uh, as a base one because here there is no any mechanism we are using. We are just giving the direct voltage and we will see what are the starting currents drawn by the machine in that case and also this starting torque uh, uh, developed in the machine and then we will discuss the other three starting methods and then we will compare how much starting torque we are limiting. So there should be some comparison or else we don't know how much we are limiting. So the first one BOL starting. Yeah, okay. So <clears throat> we are always drawing our stator. That's a, a, one more point which I want to uh, uh, discuss with you. So every time we draw our stator in a star fashion, right? Like, like this one, we are drawing it. It's not always like this. Uh, your stator can also be delta connected. Even if it's star delta, star connection or delta connection, all uh, discussions and whatever hypothesis we make, whatever uh, conclusions we uh, develop, everything remains same. The connection doesn't matter. But for this DOL starting and all the starting methods, let's uh, we will take the state of the machine as delta because as we discussed the last starting method, right, the star delta starting, for this star delta starting, uh, uh, there is a condition that your stator must be delta connected stator only. So that's why to have a fair comparison between all the uh, three methods, we are taking our stator to be delta connected. Okay, with that, <clears throat> with that uh, we will start the DOL starting. Okay, now let's say we have I'm just delta connected stator. As we discussed uh, before in DOL starting, there is no any starting. We will just give the direct supply. Okay. Okay. So this is my stator, and here is my cage rotor. Now. I have given the entire rated line to line voltage to my uh, delta connected stator. Now at S is equals to 1, because that's the starting machine, right? Now at S equals to 1, I have applied what I have applied? I have applied V rated line to line. Now we are trying to Calculate how much is the starting current as well as the starting torque. 
we estimate IST and TST. So see what whatever current is flowing in the winding, that's what uh, I am interested in. So let's say this is your stator. What is the uh, current flowing in this? This is I starting torque. Let's say you write it as I stator winding. So this is what I am interested in. Uh, that's the entire point. Uh, that's the point, whole point of discussion. How much amount of uh, starting current is flowing through my winding? So that's my goal. So my goal is to calculate the line current drawn by the supply. Now once the, we know the uh, that is this one. Let's say some current drawn here and some amount of current will flow here. So we will try to find all the currents and we will see finally what is the starting current that is flowing through the winding. And also finally we will have to comment on how much current it totally draws from the supply because my supply is the final thing which the total current is, it needs to be uh, delivered, right? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now if you see this uh, individual phase, we know the uh, equivalent circuit of this individual phase, right? So here we are applying V rated. This is phase voltage, but here it is line to line voltage. Now, uh, the, of course, in a delta connection, your phase voltage is equals to the line voltage. So here, since it's a delta connected motor, that's okay. If it is star. Uh, your line voltage will be root 3 times the phase voltage that's okay since it's a delta connected starter uh, machine uh, my line voltage and phase voltages are same now okay now this is the i starting winding and this is the i starting line <clears throat> it, it can be winding or also phase current anything you can say i'm just trying to be trying to write it as a winding because that's my uh, current I want to, I am interested in. You can write it as phase also, no problem. Now, <clears throat> what could be my starting current that is flowing through the winding? Because here you know what is the rated voltage you are applied, and here your I starting winding will flow. And if you know this entire uh, impedance, just you divide the phase voltage with respect to the impedance and you will get the starting current. Now, this is also similar to uh, short circuiting the transformer because uh, we discussed that in the first class where we started the discussion on induction machines. Uh, if the secondary of the rotor is short circuited, uh, your induction motion uh, machine is just behaves like a transformer that we, uh, we discussed in detail. So, usually what they will represent is, now I am trying to calculate I starting of the winding is equals to you are connecting V rated divided by Z. So this impedance they usually uh, mention as a short circuit impedance because uh, it's just like a uh, short circuit case of a transformer. So that's the, that's the reason I'm uh, mentioning it as a GNSC. But it's the entire impedance on the uh, stator uh, along with the rotor side, total, total uh, impedance. Now this I starting winding is also a phase winding. Now, what I am interested, my goal is to calculate the line current drawn from the supply. So, this one, I, yes, T line. Now, in a delta connection, I know that my starting line is equals to root 3 times of phase current. Now, with this relation, I will finally write IST line in DOL because later I will be taking the same notation for different starting methods. That's why uh, and, uh, we will compare, right? That's why I'm writing like this. Starting line current of my DOL is root 3 times of, uh, that is my uh, phase current, that is I starting winding, that is. V rated ZSC. We are interested in we estimate starting current and starting torque. So, <clears throat> so this is the line current that will be drawn from the supply in case of direct online starting. 
starting method that is root 3 times of rated voltage divided by the uh, impedance will be drawn by the machine and now we have estimated this uh, calculated this starting current now let's see what is the starting torque at this uh, starting condition first torque calculation we know that in the last uh, week's discussion we have calculated torques from power equations if we know uh, uh, what say your uh, air gap power air gap power divided by 2 pi n s or you can say air gap power itself is equal to torque in synchronous watts this also we discussed last, last week so let's say torque is equals to air gap power it's in synchronous watts or it is equals to air gap power 2 pi n s in Newton meter. So, this we already discussed. Now, we know that at the starting condition, let's say air gap power, we will write the formula for it. So, there is 1 by 2 pi n s at the starting. Now, my air gap power is 3 times current flowing through the windings. So, here what is the winding? I starting winding 3 I square resistance of the rotor R2 dash by S. R2 dash by S. But since it's the starting torque, my S will be equal to 1. So that's the, that's the first point we started our discussion with. So for the entire discussion, S will be equal to 1. Now I also know the I start uh, starting winding. So this 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 current. Now substitute that and uh, let's see what is the starting torque. 1 by 2 pi n s 3 into V rated by Z S E whole square into R2 dash. <coughs> now this is my starting current in starting sorry starting torque in D oil method. Now this is 1 and this is 2. Now these two are very uh, now, these two are standard. Using these 1 and 2 equations only, we will compare how much we are able to reduce the starting current and also how much we are able to reduce the, uh, how, how the starting current and starting torque are going to vary for different starting methods. Now, uh, we will come back to this slide every time we complete one starting method. Now, we will see how, what is the starting current and starting torque in reactor starting and then we will see how much uh, we will compare it with the uh, D oil starting. Now, now, let's see quickly the rest of the two starting methods that is reactor starting. The name itself says that reactor means some impedance uh, or reactants you are connecting uh, in series with the machine so there exists some reactants between supply and machine that will limit the uh, voltage reaching the machine right i i, I said that uh, this is the source side and uh, this is the machine side and this is the place where all my loads are connected so before switch the switch and the load I will connect a reactor now so that I can save some voltage reaching the uh, my uh, total motor. See that it's simple. I have uh, my source here uh, and okay. So here we know all my loads are connected like this, and this is my supply. Uh, here, here I am giving rated line to line voltage supply and here i have my machine so after my switch and before this is my machine Okay, between my supply, these are all where the loads are connected, I told you. 
Now this is this is a switch. I am connecting reactor in between for each phase. Now I can control these react three reactors. Uh, common uh, there is a common control over these three reactors where which we can I can vary uh, with the same value all the three phases reactances. Now what good it will do? What good it will do? Because of this, <clears throat> let's say uh, uh, full rated voltage I have applied here. Full rated voltage is available across the loads. Full rated voltage is available after the switch if I close it. But that full voltage is not available at this winding ends. So uh, the line to line voltage available for my machine will be lesser compared to the line to line voltage provided by the supply. So that's the whole idea. If you can able to reduce it, you will able to limit the starting current. So anyhow, this the current flowing through this winding will be starting line current but here it's a reactor starting method so i'm just uh, writing it as a method also uh, as a subscript now this is what i am interested to find from, uh, the current flowing through it and as i said so let's say if it is a v rated ll present here after passing through this uh, reactor some drop occurs so and entire v rated will not be uh, available at your motor end but a fraction of it x times of v rated line to line will be present here where x is a number between 0 to 1 so that's the setting you have set it for this reactor you change uh, so if it is a x is 0 0.5 it means that only half of the rated voltage you have applied across the um, machine windings right so here you have your rotor <clears throat> and uh, you have uh, set up the reactor in such a way that total rated voltage will not be uh, appeared across the uh, windings of the machine now my voltage across the winding uh, will, will be less than rated voltage that that I am sure because of this reactor now what is my goal my goal is to calculate the uh, starting current in the line in the reactor starting method. Now, in delta connection, we know that. So last time also we we did the same. Uh, st starting uh, line current will be root three times of phase current. I starting line reactor is equals to root three times of I starting winding so this one or phase anything you can call it <clears throat> now what is my I starting winding here so this is the line to line voltage since it's the delta the phase to phase voltage will also be the same voltage divided by the impedance impedance is same we have not changed anything in the impedance so this is the starting current of the winding in reactor. Now substitute this here to calculate the line current drawn by the supply. Now my final starting line current in reactor starting is root 3 times x into v, rate, v rated by ZSC. Now from the equation 1, what we have seen, root 3 times V rated ZSC is nothing but the starting current drawn by the machine in DOL starting method. Now, if we can able to replace that root 3 V rated by ZSC, it will, it will turn out to be I starting line in reactor is equals to X times of I starting line in DOL. Now X is no, we know X is between 0 to 1 only. So at any instant, whatever setting you have put the reactor uh, less than 1, now 
the starting current drawn in this method will be always less than the starting current drawn uh, in the DOL method. That, that, that's how you are limiting the starting current and that's how you are saving the burden, you are lessening the burden of the motor so that your motor won't draw that much high uh, starting current. So, so that, that X depends on the uh, reactor setting only. So, if it is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, if it is 1 means, 1 means what? There is no reactor at all. So, the, the, you have replaced the reactor with short circuit. There is no setting. It's the same as the DOL starting method. Okay. Now, we have, this is the, let's say, yeah. This is the equation 3. Now, let's see what is the starting torque in this condition. So, every time we are uh, looking at the starting current and also the starting torque, right? Now, starting torque is equals to air gap power divided by 2 pi n s. Same formula, 1 by 2 pi n s, air gap power is 3, winding, that is the current flowing through the winding square, starting winding in the reactor method square into R2 dash. I am not writing slip, slip is 1 here. Now, so yeah, what is the I start, uh, starting winding here? So this one. So there is x into V rated by ZSC. Now substitute it and uh, see what what is what is that you can observe. Whole square into R2 dash. Now if you compare it with the DOL starting torque, 1 by 2 pi ns, 3 times of V rated by ZSC whole square into R2 is the same starting torque applied in the DOL. Uh, method. Now there is a extra x square term. Now T starting, so this is in reactor starting method. T starting torque in reactor is equals to x square will come out x square times of starting torque developed in DOL. Now again, this is the equation 4. Okay, maybe yeah, this can be equation 3. Now see here, if your starting torque is decreased by x times, your uh, sorry, starting current is decreased by x times, your starting torque will be decreased by x square times here. So of course, the, uh, using this reactor, uh, whatever starting methods, your starting torque will be reduced. One advantage is you are getting a less current, but also your starting torque will also get reduced. So yeah, that's a trade off uh, we can observe here. Uh, so that uh, the, the the factor by which the starting torque reduces is when compared to the DOL starting is x square times. So yeah, we will now see the uh, one more starting method, auto transformer starting, and let's see what happens. So one thing I want to uh, uh, tell you uh, tell you about is this reactor starting and auto transformer starting are well, are good methods compared to the DOL starting. But the problem with these two methods is you need additional equipment, right? So here, here you have bought a reactor a reactors here and now which you are going to discuss auto transformer starting, you have to actually buy an auto transformer that is much costly. So we have to, there is also a cost perspective in it. So you have to buy reactor and auto transformer and then you have to connect that in between supply and your machine so that you will limit the starting current. There, there involves a cost factor also, but you are reducing the burden. So that's where your last starting method comes into picture. That is star delta starting. There, that method doesn't require any external circuitry, but still it reduces the uh, starting current. So that we will look at the fourth starting method. But before that, we will just have a quick look into uh, auto transformer starting. <clears throat> One second, let me just uh, take some slides. Yeah, auto transformer and reactor startings are well and good, but uh, we have to have some extra circuitry for it. That's the problem for uh, uh, reactor and uh, auto transformer. But anyhow, we will be Sorry. Anyhow, we will be discussing the last start uh, starting method that is star delta uh, by which you can easily uh, achieve this goal of uh, limiting the starting current 
as well as <clears throat> without any additional circuitry so that we will see so before that i will discuss auto transformer starting you know auto transformer right auto transformer is a device on which you will have a knob uh, you will just uh, uh, turn the knob you will get variable ac voltage as the output it's just the tappings uh, there will be a different tapping uh, mechanism inside it as you keep on changing the number of turns will uh, available at the end will be changing so that the more the turns are the more the voltage you will get at the uh, secondary side so that's the principle of auto transformer uh, you might have observed this or you might have seen this auto transformer in your laboratories uh, that's the device which we can give you a variable uh, ac voltage as the output now using this auto transformer starting we will see how much uh, amount of starting current we are able to reduce and compare to the dol and how my starting torque is also getting reduced now what you will do in this auto transformer starting you take a three phase auto transformer because our machine is three phase and all supplies three phase and uh, you connect that auto transformer between the supply and the machine so let's say this is my supply and uh, now i'm connecting <clears throat> let's say this is my machine okay now in in between these two i am trying to connect auto transformer okay just <clears throat> supply here yeah this is my supply Okay, so this is my auto transformer. Auto transformer has a, a variable point where from which we will connect my machine, right? So everyone will have the tapping tappings like this. <clears throat> okay. This is one phase, and. One. This is to the other face of my stator. So again, same way you will have your rotor connected. Yeah, this is my stator, and this is the supply. Here you will be giving full rated voltage line to line. You will be applying here. Now, what is the current drawn by this supply? Is what our goal is. Now let's say this is starting current, line current that is drawn by the supply, right? So this is what we uh, we want to find, and the same way uh, this is the auto transformer. Now the current flowing here will be this is also a line current, but this is the current drawn by by machine machine line current, but this current will be again. Starting current, but the flows in the winding or a phase current, you can say this is for the auto transformer. Okay, now we will see how much current my ultimately I want to calculate this uh, line currents are drawn by the supply, how much my supply has to deliver to the load. Now, so we will look into how that can be calculated again. Simple relation which we have seen in the DOL starting reactor starting the same principle uh, we will apply it here so first we will see what is this uh, uh, phase current uh, which we are going to see here now from the diagram we can see this is the rated voltage and uh, because of this tappings again same like uh, reactor uh, starting x times of uh, v rated will be available here that is the uh, line to line voltage uh, available after the auto transformer because of the tappings now with this uh, line to line voltage since it's a delta connector you will have the entire uh, line to line voltage appear across this phase now to calculate this phase current in auto transformer that is nothing but x times the 
V rated divided by JDC. Simple one. So this is the phase current. Now to calculate this <coughs> line current. One second. Yeah. Now so we know the phase current now. You need to calculate the line current in a delta connection. I starting line drawn by the machine will be root 3 times of phase current in auto transformer starting. So you multiply root 3 with it. Root 3 times V rated divided by sorry X is there. X into V rated by ZSC. Now we need to calculate the input current. So this is the output, the secondary side of the auto transformer. Now we have to calculate the primary side current. That is actual goal is to calculate this supply, uh, uh, current drawn by the supply. Now since it's a uh, auto transformer, this one. So this one is auto transformer. Now we know in a transformer, uh, the input KVA, input voltage and volt amperes will be equal to output volt amperes. So that also we discussed uh, uh, in previous NPTEL sessions uh, when we are discussing the concepts on transformer. Now we will use that in a transformer that input KVA is equals to in a transformer input KVA is equals to output KVA. Now if you if you if if you use that relation, now what is my input KVA? From the input uh, root 3 VL IL and output is root 3 VL IL. So that's the three phase. Now here it is uh, input input KVA we have rated voltage and the output side we have the uh, X times of rated voltage. Now input side I am writing root, root 3 line voltage that is V rated line to line. And uh, the current is I starting current line that is from the supply which we are interested to calculate. And the output KVA is root 3 times of what is the line voltage here? This is X times of V rated that is the setting set it by the auto transformer. X times of V rated and the current flowing is I starting line here this one machine current machine now root 3 root 3 gets cancelled v rated v rated gets cancelled now my required thing is i starting line current by the supply is equals to x times my line current drawn by the machine what is this one this is this one root 3 times of x into v rated by zsc root 3 times x into v rated divided by zsc now this is supply voltage now let's go back to the equation number one and see what is the starting current drawn by the bol root 3 times v rated divided by zsc now you do see here root 3 times v rated by zsc now there is a x square term now this will be simply equal to x square terms of i starting line in DOL. So this is in auto transformer. Now the relation is x square times the uh, starting uh, line current drawn by the DOL. We already know x is always between 0 to 1. Now, if you just see the uh, reactor uh, reactor starting, your starting times, uh, starting line current is reduced by x times. Now, here it is reduced by x square times. Why I am saying reduced means your x is always less than 1. So, if, if your setting is 0.5, in reactor it is 0.5 times of the starting current, but here it is 0.25 times. So, the reduction will be square times in the auto transformer. Now, yeah, similarly, we will see the uh, starting torque now. Starting torque in auto transformer starting. Now, we know the same formula. I will just quickly write 1 by 2 pi NS into air gap power, where air gap power is 3i square, that is current flowing in the phase. Starting current 
binding in the auto transformer starting square into R2 dash by S as is equals to 1. So, what is this phase current? Let's go back and see. So, this is the phase current at the top you can see X into V rated by ZSC. We will substitute it. X into V rated by ZSC whole square into R2 dash. Now, uh, if you see the DOL starting dot, <clears throat> it's uh, equation number 2 you can see here. 1 by 2 pi ns, 3 times of V by ZSC square into R2 dash. Okay. 1 by 2 pi ns, 3 times of uh, V by ZSC whole square into R2 dash. So, there is just a X square term. Now, T starting in auto transformer is equals to x square times of t starting in dol. Now, this is the equation 6. Now, this is the equation 5. So, now, what we have observed in these three starting methods <coughs> in reactor starting and auto transformer starting based on your uh, setting of your reactants, your starting torque will be reduced by x times in reactor and x square times in the auto transformer. So, I will just uh, highlights I will write here in reactor starting, IST is decreased by x times and TST is decreased by x square times, but in Auto transformer starting, both IST and TST are reduced by x square times. So, this is the advantage you have with the auto transformer. You will get a reduction in starting current by x square times, but at the same time, you have to buy an auto transformer. Right. <clears throat> One second. Yeah. So, that is the advantage you will have. You have to choose between buying an auto transformer or buying a reactor or going with a direct online if it is a small motor. So, in both reactants, as I said, in both reactor and auto transformer starting, we have to buy our reactor and auto transformer. So, to overcome this uh, cost, the cost into the picture, so we have, we have to invest, invest something uh, to, into buying some reactor or uh, auto transformer to achieve this reduction in the starting current. So, to overcome this uh, disadvantage of investing some money, we have another nice method which is star delta starting. So, that is the uh, another starting method. You will see an interesting phenomenon or very simple phenomenon. Uh, this is star delta starting without any additional equipment or any additional uh, circuitry or anything we buy uh, anything we in order to buy anything we can achieve the reduction in the uh, <coughs> starting current but as i said uh, in the starting the condition of the motor to support this kind of starting method is your machine should be designed for a delta winding at the stator what does the star delta starting means is initially it start in, initially, it is in the star connection and once it gets its speed and running, we will change the shader connection to delta connection. So, so initial, uh, finally, it is in delta connection. That is why the condition is um, uh, the stator of the machine is designed for delta connection for running condition. You have two connections, right? That is starting phase and running phase. In starting phase, you will go for star connection. In running phase, you will uh, shift the uh, stator connections to the delta connection. So, that is why that, that's how we can achieve the reduction. We will see how we are going to achieve it, but that is the idea. So, given that your motor has a delta connected stator, then only I can implement this star delta starting. That is the point, that is the reason why we have taken all the stators of uh, 
reactor starting or a transformer starting and DOL starting as delta because so that I can compare it with the my uh, star delta starting method. Anyway, I will uh, start the star delta starting. Let's say <clears throat> initially I have uh, my stator. I am changing my stator connection to star now. That's the point. So initially it is start. So I have my star connector stator temporarily, temporarily only till it's get. This is star connected stator. And okay, this is my rotor. Now I will apply my entire rated line to line voltage here. Okay. <clears throat> At the time of starting, uh, my uh, connection you are seeing here, it, it is in the uh, star connection. Later, uh, once it picks up the speed, I can change. I will change it to delta. So, well, let's let's analyze this starting condition. So, okay. So this one is a line to line voltage. Now, what will be the uh, my phase voltage here? It will be uh, V rated, whatever you are seeing, line to line divided by root three. My phase voltage in the star, star connection is uh, 1 by root 3 times of the line voltage which I am seeing. Now, since in, sorry, in star connection, in my star connection, you know, the line current is equal to the phase current. Now, my goal is to calculate this current, which is starting line current in star delta method which is same as my <clears throat> i start thing current in the winding in star delta okay in since it's the star connection winding i starting line current star delta is equal to i starting phase current in star delta okay the subscript star delta is only just to uh, say that it's a star delta starting method. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Hello. Okay. Now. Uh, so. Hello. Sorry, uh, am I audible now? Can anyone confirm? Okay, thank you. Uh, there was a, a network issue. Sorry for that. <clears throat> Give me one minute, I'll just put it back. <clears throat> okay, so we are discussing this point. I hope I am audible and I am also visible to you all. I hope that. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So let's continue with the discussion. Uh, we are almost uh, at the end of our uh, discussion for the starting methods. Now, okay. Now, <clears throat> in star connection, we know the line current is equals to my phase current. So here, uh, if you see what is my phase current, it's a phase voltage divided by by impedance. So what is my phase voltage? It is rated voltage divided by root 3 now v rated divided by root 3 divided by my impedance so this is my 
uh, phase current flowing through the winding and this is uh, same as my uh, line current uh, that is drawn by the supply in this case now <clears throat> since uh, i starting line what we have uh, given it is v rated divided by root 3 times zsc in star delta now can we go back and check the equation one we have now my i starting dl is root 3 times of v rated by zsc now what we have got here here we have got 1 by root 3 times of uh, uh, zsc now if you compare it with i starting in start uh, start delta line current is how many times 1 by 3 times of i starting of line dol because my dol is root 3 times of v rated now if you divide it by 3 then only you will get 1 by root 3 times of this so it's a simple algebra uh, which i have uh, do, did, did it here now my starting current is 1 by third of the starting current which i have uh, got in the dol method so equation 7 and let's discuss the last point for today that is uh, starting torque in this particular star delta starting let's see how much we are going to reduce it yeah starting torque in this condition will be starting torque in star delta we know that the same formula 1 by 2 pi ns 3 times of uh, 8 power 3 i square r now 3 into i square that is state starting current in the binding in star delta square into r2 dash <clears throat> now what is this uh, binding uh, current it is same as the line current which is v rated by root 3 times zsc now let's substitute it here v rated by root 3 zsc square into r2 dash now what is the uh, <coughs> dol uh, starting torque it is 1 by 2 pi ns 3 v square by zsc into r2 now what we are getting is 1 by root 3 whole square that is 1 by 3 term we are getting extra now if we take it outside we can say it as t starting in dol that is t starting in star delta now you can see in that is the highlight point uh, i'm just highlighting here in star delta starting ist both ist and uh, this one are reducing by uh, one third factor one third now if you see the auto transformer it is going down by x square and uh, yeah, if you compare this auto transformer and the star delta, if you take x is equals to that setting setting of the auto transformer as x equals to 1 by root 3, then this also will reduce by 1 by 3 and 1 by 3, it is same as the star delta. Now, they, 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 they can ask something like this, star delta starting is equals to auto transformer starting if x is equals to 1 by root 3. Yeah, so both starting torque and starting current are redu reducing by a factor of 1 by 3. Now, <clears throat> the, the key point is how to change the connection from star to delta once the motor picks up its speed, right? So, you have to make such kind of arrangement in your stator. So, the stator terminal should be available to the design uh, in terms of design perspective he should uh, make an arrangement such that you will have the availability of the stator terminals and initially you will connect to star and once it is uh, once it pick up the speed you will change it to delta <clears throat> because how how a delta connection will look like let's say this is your three phases and uh, a1 
a2 and uh, b1 b2 and c1 c2 now in, in a delta connection let's say this is uh, your uh, a1 and a2 is connected to b1 b2 is connected to c1 and c2 is connected to a1 so this is what your uh, delta connection will look like but star connection is a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 uh, like all these are connected uh, at the same end because a2 b2 c2 are connected in the same end so if you see uh, star connection so if it is a1 it is a2 it is b1 it is b2 it is c1 it is c2 a2 b2 c2 are shorted that is at that, that, that point now we, we will make that kind of interesting arrangement where initially it will be like that so let's say it is a1 phase a this is phase b and it is this one and uh, <clears throat> let's apply here supply okay i'm just writing uh, so this one is supply and it is a1 this is a2 one second and uh, this is okay this is b2 b1 and c1 C2. So this point usually we have to connect if it's a star, right? Now we are trying to uh, shift this connection into delta once it is uh, once it picks up the speed. So now we are using a TPDT switch, but like, tri uh, like triple pole double throw switch that we will use. Triple pole means three poles will be there. One, two, three, and double throw means it will have two sides, one throw and second throw. It's a TPDT switch. So let's say uh, this side is a star connection. Now see, A2 needs to be uh, A2 needs to be connected to. Uh, let's say this is A2. B2, C2. That's the point. Now A2 needs to connect it to A2. Now, because uh, once it is connected to this side, it will be star. B2 needs to be connected to B2, and C2 needs to be connected to C2. Okay, I have connected all uh, A2, B2, C2. Now, once my switch is this side, it is everything A2, B2, C2 is shorted. It is a star connection. Now, this side is starting. And see now, if my switch chooses this side, it should be uh, what what kind of connection? This is delta connection. Now my A2 side, this is A2 A2. This is this is from A2, right? So this one should be connected to what? You see the top top diagram delta. A2 is connected to B1. So this should be B1. I have connected to B1. This is B1. Now my this one is B2. B2 should be connected to C1. This is C1. Where is C1? Now here you need to bring this from this C1. This is C1. <clears throat> and now this one is C2. C2 is connected to A1. From A1 you bring one other side and you connect it to this one. So this is A1. Now if, if your switch if your switch is this side it will be star and it if it this side it, it will be delta connected. This is the running condition so i uh, sorry yeah <clears throat> this is the kind of arrangement you just have to uh, introduce a switch now so with a simple switch introduction you are able to achieve the star delta kind of starting method and on top of that you don't need to spend any money on buying a reactor or uh, buying any auto transformer or anything like that uh, and, and also the other advantage is you are not applying entire full voltage at the machine ends. You are limiting the starting current as well as you are starting to will see some kind of detection. So yeah, this is the uh, most preferable starter. Given that 
your rotor is a delta connected rotor for the running condition the your rotor must be designed to that kind of connection only then you will go for this kind of uh, starting method so with that yeah it's already 5:30 we have to discuss the numericals for this uh, week um, for you also so with at this point uh, till this point uh, uh, i will stop the discussion on the starting methods so anyhow we already covered the all the starting methods we started the discussion with the uh, dol starting and then we we saw the all uh three types of uh this is the starting reactor starting auto transformer starting and also the star delta starting yeah now let's look at the uh, some problems uh, uh based uh, that is on the induction uh, motor and if if we uh, if you understood the last week discussion uh, it, it will be very simple to solve uh, this week's uh, numerical as well so i request everyone to uh, take their calculators and also pen and paper so the, uh, now this week's discussion uh, on the numericals will be mostly uh, relations between torque relation between starting torque relation between maximum torque and what is the ratio and that kind of algebraic operations only if you if, if you uh, if you are good at solving this quadratic equations and uh, algebraic equations and it, it's very simple because we already know uh, what's the formula for what torque and it will be very simple and straightforward questions only but it's just it it it's, it's involves some calculations so that's it so that's why i also request everyone to solve along with me so that uh, we can compare the uh, answers so let's start the discussion of the numericals first so let's have the uh, let's read the question so we were given with the 10 kilowatt uh, motor so last week also we discussed whatever power they give in the question is the output power the shaft power or you can also say gross mechanical power that's the total opposing power so okay okay 10 kilowatt motor we have given and it's a three phase 400 volts 50 hertz four pole machine it's a slip ring induction motor that is it is not a cage motor when if it is slip ring induction motor it is it is is in such a way where we can increase the rotor resistances we we are actually uh, made available the rotor terminal so that we can in, insert external resistance okay anyway uh, so the maximum torque occurs at 16% slip and it is double of the full load torque so what uh, it is saying is it's a torque and it's a slip and we know uh, this is some kind of torque slip characteristics so this maximum torque it is saying t max is occurring at a slip alpha so this alpha is equals to 16% it means 0.16 so we know the slip at which the maximum torque occurs and it also says a relation that my maximum torque is two times the full load torque so this is i'm just uh, trying to represent the data whatever it was given so i have given the slip at which the maximum torque occurs and also uh, the relation between maximum torque and also the full load torque and what uh, stator impedances core loss mechanical losses everything are negligible so if stator impedances are negligible r1 x1 0 and core loss is not there rc branch is not there mechanical losses are not there so there are no friction losses there are no um, uh, and uh, what bearing losses there are no windage losses all losses are equal to zero so we have neglected parallel branch we have neglected stator impedances so only available impedances are r2 and x2 rotor resistances okay so yeah with this uh, data and with this information let's see what we are asked to calculate so the first one is full load slip sfl so i i i will be following these notations fl means full load uh, max means maximum and uh, st means starting so this kind of uh, notations we will follow so that we will be easy now we are asked to find full load slip okay uh, how to calculate <coughs> full load slip so this this particular problem involves a bit uh, solving of a quadratic equation because we don't know uh, full load slip but we know the slip at which the maximum torque occurs and we also know the relation between maximum torque and full load torque that is this uh, double condition 
with the available data we will see what relations we can able to get so that we can solve for the full load slip so i will be writing the information available now we are given with the uh, slip value at which the maximum torque occurs so we know the formula for it we discussed uh, the derivation of all the torques and slips in the last week before last week you can refer to that now the slip with, at which the maximum torque occurs the formula is r2 dash alpha is the slip at which the maximum torque occurs r2 dash divided by the equivalent impedance r r theta square plus xth plus x2 dash whole square now this is the formula and uh, since in the question it was given r1 x1 is equals to 0 rth xth itself is the thevenant of the stator side so this will be 0 this will be 0 so x2 dash square will be left root and square will be cancelled so it will boil it, it will boil down to r2 dash by x2 dash which is equals to 0.16 so this is what a relation we have now alpha is equals to r2 dash by x2 dash is equals to 0.16 so this is one equation we have got <coughs> and uh, we are we are also provided with a relation maximum torque is a double times of full load torque uh, so what is the formula for t max that also we know that is 3 vth square by 2 pi ns into r2 dash by s by total impedance r2 dash by s whole square plus xth plus x2 dash whole square now uh sorry this is the formula for electromagnetic torque uh full load uh, electromagnetic torque 3 uh, thevenant voltage per 2 pi ns if it's a maximum torque uh, uh, r2 won't come and also you will get a 4 4 pi ns uh, if you want the derivation you can refer to our last week's uh, discussion and i'm writing the formulas for both full load and maximum so because we we know the relation right we want to get something out of that relation now yeah what is the formula for maximum torque 3 vth square by 4 pi ns 1 by uh, and the impedance we have rth square plus xth plus x2 dash whole square now see uh, since yeah since we know that the stator impedances are all negligible you can keep rth and xth wherever you see as a zero right so let's keep all those as zero and then we will see what the simplified expression we will get from that okay now if we keep rth xth as zeros and we will see my full load torque expression you also keep those as zeros and tell me the final answer uh, vth we anyhow v1 that is uh, in voltage 2 pi ns on the numerator r dash by s will be same and denominator we will be left with r2 dash by s square plus x2 dash square and here the maximum torque will be 3 v1 square by 4 pi ns uh denominator 1 will be there and if you see the uh, denominator uh here this will be zero this will be zero this will be zero and x2 dash whole square this uh, root and this one will cancel only x2 dash will be there okay so these are all the final uh, torque expressions and we know that te max is Two times of full load torque. Now the ratio will be T E max by T E F L is equals to two, or you can say T E F L. If you divide this by this, you will get one by two. Now one by two is equals to full load torque. Uh, 
that is di divide this one by this one 3 sorry v1 square will be that v1 square 3 v1 square cancel pi n s pi n s cancel and uh, there will be 2 times factor on, uh, in the denominator and you will have r2 dash by s divided by this one so i will write 2 times of r2 dash by s divided by r2 dash by s whole square plus x2 dash whole square divided by 1 by x2 dash so yeah this one you have as a fraction now i will just simplify it further 2 times of r2 dash into x2 dash divided by s and r2 dash by s whole square this is a denominator x2 dash whole square and uh, this will be 2 times of now see uh, <clears throat> if you see from the relation which we got from the equation 1 alpha is equals to r2 dash by x2 dash so you, you can replace x2 dash with r2 dash by alpha or uh, r2 dash with alpha x2 dash and you convert everything into single form so i am replacing uh, wherever i have r2 dash i will replace it with alpha into x2 so here i have r2 dash i will replace with alpha into x2 there is another dash square divided by s i have and here r2 dash i will replace with alpha into x2 so alpha square x2 dash square divided by s square plus x2 dash square now you can take x2 dash square and get it common and then you will be left with 2 times of alpha divided by s will be there in the denominator s square will come up and 2 alpha s divided by alpha square plus s square is equals to 1 by 2 now you, you see you have got a quadratic equation where you have the alpha and s as a uh, variables and but you know the value of alpha you alpha is 0.16 and you can substitute alpha as 0.16 and you get the quadratic equation. This is x square. I am directly writing the quadratic equation. 0.64s plus 0.0256 is equals to 0. So, this is the quadratic equation. You can solve this and get two values of slip. Please solve with me. You take the quadratic equation solver in the uh, as calculator. And you solve for it. 0.0256. So I got two values. One is S1 0 0.597, and another one is S2 0 0.042. So this is 59% slip, and this is 4.2% slip. So, uh, in order your motor to become stable, you can't have 59% slip. Uh, the, the, you see, the, the, your maximum torque is occurring at slip of uh, 16%. And uh, to remain your motor in the stable side, uh, that is this side of the side, and you should have a slip less than 0.16. So, 0 0.042 is the feasible value of slip here. So, that is the value of full load slip 0 0.042 so yeah with just the available data we have calculated uh, the full load slip here 0 0.042 uh, you got a uh, quantity equation you solved for it and you got the full load slip so yeah 0 point okay in, in percentage it was asked it is 4.2% and then you have to calculate the speed at full loading RPM. RPM means capital N and FL you have to calculate. Okay, anyhow, uh, the rotor speed, uh, it's very straightforward formula. NFL is equals to NS into 1 minus SFL because it's a full load speed. So, NS will be 120 F by P. It's a 50 hertz machine and it's a 4 pole machine. Uh, 50 hertz supply, 4 pole machine. And we just calculated a uh, slip that is 0 0.0429. And if you calculate it, so 
So yeah, one four three five point six five. I hope one four three five point six five RPM. So straightforward formula. One way uh, N S A N R is equals to N S into one minus S. So yeah, we are uh, we are asking to calculate the full load torque. So we already have the formula for full load torque. But one more uh, easy way to that that one we did because we need a relation between and all. And uh, here the full load torque we can also get from the power uh, data we know because uh, in the question we were provided with it's a 10 kilowatt motor. This means it is the P output motor, right? We know it's a uh, this is a uh, shaft power. Uh, so the formula for full load torque is equal to we know it is P output by 2 pi n r by 60 or air gap power by 2 pi n s by 60. But since we don't know air gap power and since we don't know uh, this one, we, we, we directly substitute this way. Because if we want to air gap power, we can, already cal we can also calculate. But here it is a straightforward substitution. So we will take this formula. So full load torque is equals to output power 10 kilowatt 2 pi uh, we just now calculated nr 1435.6 divided by 60 so let's calculate this one divided by 10 okay. i got 66 point okay so the full load torque is 66.515 newton meter. So anyhow, it's a full load torque. You have you know the uh, rated power, output power. Using that output power, you can directly substitute uh, the formula 2 pi n, n r, and you can get uh, the full load torque. Now we are asked to calculate the maximum torque. Now to calculate the maximum torque. Uh, we can, all, we can also go by the formula, but there is another simple relation which was given in the problem. Your maximum torque is 2 times of full load torque. That's the given in the question. So, 2 times of 66.515. This is 133. 133.03 Newton meter. Okay. It's a straightforward question. If you know the full load torque, maximum torque is very easy. Now, okay. Starting torque. Uh, to calculate the starting torque, uh, if you know the, uh, I mean, operating torque, if you know the full load torque, uh, and you need to get the starting torque. The, uh, one more thing you know is, uh, at, at starting condition, S is equals to 1. But at full load condition, you will have a full load slip. So, what we can do? Here, your full load torque is also a running torque. So you have a relation where some torque uh, divided by what is the relation we have in the first question? Okay. T uh, operating torque, see here, uh, uh, operating torque divided by maximum torque. We have the relation of 2 alpha s by alpha square plus s square where s is equals to operating slip. Now I will write the condition here. T full load uh, by T max is equals to 2 S alpha by alpha square plus S square. This is, is this the equation? Yeah. Now, if it is a full load, now S is equals to full load. Now, if it is a starting torque, because we have done this uh, derivation right from the expression itself. Now, if it is starting torque, S, S will be equal to what? 2 1 into alpha alpha square plus 1 square. Now, from this expression, you need to calculate starting because we just calculated the maximum torque. Now, how much is the maximum torque? It's 133.03. Yeah. Now, T starting is equals to 133.03 multiplied by 2 into alpha is 0 0.16, 16% slip, 0 0.16 square plus 1. So, someone calculate it. Divided by 0 0.16 square plus 1. So I got 
5 yes so the starting torque is 41.507 newton meter so we know this relation with this relation you can get any torque if you know the slip at that position so since we know the full load slip you can get the full load torque if you know the starting slip you can get the starting torque simple relation and okay now we are uh, asked to calculate the rotor copper losses at the full load now uh, this can be calculated very easily if we remember the relation which we uh, discussed two weeks before very important relation in induction machines we discussed that there is a ratio so i will just write the formula which is important for this rotor copper losses is equals to s times of pag so this relation we saw 1 is to s is to 1 minus s air gap power is to rotor copper losses uh, power is to gross mechanical so that relation i took uh, this will be useful to calculate this and uh, one more thing we uh, from the uh, formula we write is p gross mechanical power is equals to uh, 1 minus s times of phg right now from this if you want to calculate uh, rotor copper losses take the first formula rotor copper losses is equals to s times of phg we don't know but in in phg we can replace it with p gross mechanical divided by 1 minus s so now we are asked to calculate the uh, rotor copper losses at full load at full load it will be full load slip p gross mechanical will be the total output power output power at full load divided by 1 minus s full load because gross mechanical power we just talked about that's the shaft power that's the output power uh, full load power rated power now just replace it full load slip uh, we have calculated 0.0429 multiplied by 10 kilowatt motor 1 minus 0.0429 so let's calculate this one one minus 0.0429 okay <clears throat> rotor copper losses at full load are 448.22 watts so it's again a simple formula if you remember that relation you, you can directly get by uh, direct substitution everything is known you can calculate the rotor copper losses now uh, we need to calculate the ratio between starting current to the full load current again you know the relation between starting torque and full load torque and you have to just replace it with uh, because you know the starting torque value and you know the full load torque value and you have to just find the relation between the currents and torque so that you can easily get this because t starting is equals to 3 times of starting uh, square multiplied by r2 by s s will be equal to 1 here and uh, full load torque is 3 times of full load current multiplied by r2 by s full load now it just take the ratio of these two and these two will be get cancelled and r2 r2 gets cancelled and s is equals to 1 here s full load will come up now what is the starting torque starting torque is 41.5 newton meter we calculated that full load torque is 66.5 newton meter and we will have i uh, starting torque square full load torque square multiplied by sfl then you will take this uh, full load slip here 0.0429 and you have to take under root of all this 41.5 0.0429 multiplied by 66.5 is equal to the required ratio starting torque divided by the full load torque so how much is this 51.5 3.815 so this is the ratio of these two <coughs> and uh, current at maximum torque uh, divided by the full load current same thing you have to get a relation between these two and uh, take the ratio of it now <coughs> maximum torque they said and full load current t uh, maximum torque is 3 uh, times of uh, i at t max square multiplied by r2 by s the slip at maximum torque is alpha right and uh, and again divided by full load torque is 
three times of I full load multiplied by R2 by S full load. Now 3, 3 cancel and R2, R2 cancel and this ratio of I at T max divided by I full load is equals to square root of <coughs> alpha by SFL uh, multiplied by T max by TFL. It's just simple substitutions here. Alpha is 0.16 and full load slip is 0 0.0429 and maximum torque is 133 and uh, full load torque is how much? Uh, how much is full load torque? 66.5. Anyhow, we have the relation also. It's two times 66.5. So you substitute it and uh, you will get the answer for this. Okay, it is 2.73. It's again simple ratio and substitution. And the last one is full load efficiency. Okay, efficiency is always calculated by output power by input power. So since we know uh, output power directly and input power we have to calculate. So, input power can be calculated if you know the entire losses. It's nothing but output power plus uh, losses, right? So, if you are neglecting all the uh, core losses, mechanical losses, whatever uh, rotor, uh, rotor loss, uh, shutter loss also be neglected because shutter impedances are negligible. So, the only losses left are rotor copper losses, which we calculated before, uh, which we found out to be 448 watts. So, output power is 10 kilowatt. So, the input power is 10 kilowatt plus total losses that is 448.2 something now if you calculate this you will get an efficiency of 95.71 percent so yeah that's a very uh, straightforward and very simple problems in induction machines you will uh, come across because everything is straightforward but the concept is clear and the uh, formulas are very simple and you don't need to remember any big big formulas like in power systems and all so you just have to re remember small small uh, relations small ratios and small torque formula current formula and, and you will get just get the answer so I hope uh, this uh, discussion is useful today. So I'll just give a quick summary of all the things we have discussed today. Uh, we have started the discussion with the concept of starting of uh, three-phase induction machines, and we will we have seen why the starting uh, methods are required. So what's the necessity uh, to to address that? We have discussed what actually happens uh, when we start an induction motor. So we saw how a large current uh, is drawn by the motor and what's the problem from the motor side and what's the problem from the source side so why this voltage dip occurs whenever we start a uh, big loads in your ac in your home like ac or fridge and then that uh, drives us to the need of the starting uh, the machine and then we discussed all the starting methods dol and reduced voltage within reduced voltage we have three different reactors starting auto transformer and star delta so we, we have uh, compared all the starting methods with the dol starting and we have seen the highlight points where the starting current is reduced by x and x square in reactor and x square times for both current and torque in auto transformer. And then we finally saw the best starting method of star delta where we don't require any additional circuitry or additional equipment. With the same connection, we change from star to delta and we can achieve the good starting current reduction and also some uh, decrement in the starting torque that is 1 by 3. And then we started solving the problems uh, which are direct substitutions of formulas and uh, the given relations and yeah <clears throat> so yeah if that uh, 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 we, we can close the today's discussion and if you if you have any doubt in the today's discussion or any concept is uh, unclear for you please do uh, uh, let me know and we will discuss and uh, if i don't know that answer for that i will surely discuss with my uh, teammates and I will get back to you the next week. Meanwhile, if you have any doubt uh, all through the week you are coming across any difficulty in understanding any concept, you just raise your queries in the discussion forums and uh, people who are not able to uh, attend this uh, session you attend the second session you understand the concept discussed by my, my fellow TA in the next session from 7 to 9 but uh, you also refer to my uh, video 
right after completing the session i am uploading the video to the youtube i hope you are uh, having that link so yeah you just if you miss the session you can refer to the video at any time uh, it, it's present in the youtube so yeah if you have any questions please do ask or else you can end the session today thank you thank you govin thank you anil thank you priya okay so there are no more uh, doubts for this session i thank you again for uh, patiently sitting with me and discussing with, uh, with me and uh, uh, interacting with me uh, let's meet at the same time for to six session in the next week thank you thank you all